Most people in America have seen the films Iron Man. You've seen the scene with Jeff Bridges and with the marvelous actor who plays Iron Man, who's Robert Downey Jr. And thank God for Angels, otherwise I might not have remembered that name. But what I can tell you is that people are being tortured in jails. And I can also tell you that these audio pitch files that they utilized to freeze him are very real. And they did come in from the Middle East. As a victim of audio file torture, I can tell you that it's very real. But the minute I say that, 90% of America will not believe that. You see, what happens to people is that they lose space and time. What I mean is that someone can play an audio file at you and you can fall asleep. Someone can play another audio file at you and you'll take out your money and give it to them. Someone might play another tone at you and you lose hours while the individual is attacking or harming the victim. I'm concerned with what I see today, says the person in the film. And what we learn about from the films of America is what is possible and what is real and what is plausible and what is unreal. What is unreal is that a man goes down to pick up some food for his dinner and he starts working and he starts working for several hours. What is unusual is that there's a derelict couple that always seems to need to walk past him and then walk past him again to return. The woman leaves her stuff in front of the Dollar Tree. The man comes down on his crutches and comes after her a little later and then they both leave again. My question is, what is the purpose of your walk? What are you picking up and incurring for someone? And why is it that we have to care? What I'm concerned about is I'm looking through my bags and see that while I've been napping or while I've been sleeping, someone has been reorganizing me. That was happening to me when I was in Indiana. And those sorts of things are very immoral, incredibly illegal and highly offensive to me and many other people. The illegal individuals who do these things might even have the ability to train the human mind not to see someone. So you could have someone like your wife that you're madly in love with, but someone in a corporate position in a jail could train you to never be able to see them. It's also that psychologists who like to do training on the mind could train you to misfigure someone's face. We all know that in the Bible, we understand that the Lord has used transfiguration to keep people from abuse and keep people from seeing people. I absolutely know that I've seen people on campus who have the exact mannerisms as my family members, but they don't look anything like them. There was a man who looked Japanese to me, who had my brother's walk and gait and the way that he carries his hands like an ape to walk. And openly, I don't believe it was my brother, but he was always riding past me on a bicycle. Another time, there was a woman who was laughing horageously like a hyena who sort of had the implications with the way that she handled her hands that she might have been someone to me and my family, but not at all did she look like that with frizzy hair and whatnot. It's kind of unnerving that psychology courses and human relations courses may be teaching those things, but I'm also guessing that our military forces are becoming accustomed to those things that they have to get out of. It may be why we're trying to look to films like Terminator and Universal Soldier and even the upcoming Jedi films which are talking about using humanoids to be our enforcers and our soldiers in the world to keep the actual humans safer. We also have had some major great films coming out that they are suggesting with Jennifer Lace, Jason Lee, I think is the person I could be mistaken, and maybe I am, in which we need to start consolidating our education to about four different fields so that we have our farming handle, so that we have our military capabilities still fully um, capa to capacity of men and women, people who will protect us with martial arts skills and other types of weaponry and capabilities that are not as deadly or lethal. And then that we have the mathematical minds for accounting of things of America Inc. And then we have the scientific minds and the social geeks who can help us to 
discover new technologies and produce new life for us. I don't know what is the right course of action, but what I can tell you is whether you feel this is one of my storylines that is real or whether you feel this is one of my storylines that is fake, what we do know from people who are musicians is that there's certain audio tile types and certain music that help to develop the brain. My concern for my sister, who is late of, of many years, is that her incredible work and article that has been prolificated across America has been used and abused by scientists to try to do new things in our mind. We all know that you can listen to an audio file to quit smoking. We all know that that new show on television that shows how the eyes actually see things is different than what we see. But I guess my question to you is at what point do we stop? At what point do we have the right to say no to things? At what point do we have the right to say, I'm sorry, you may not reprogram me. You may not retro me. You may not take my 53-year-old body at your will and do whatever you like to me. You may not shave me in a sexual misconduct. You may not clip my beard in a hate crime on my religion. And you may not go anywhere near my genitalia, which is not yours to play with. You see, as far as I go in these audio files, someone will come through and try to edit or cut or clip them out of an immoral act of hatred, out of an incestuous way to be, or out of an illicit concept of behavior that is all quite illegal. In life, we have moments of time to speak the truth about new technologies. On the one hand, we have technologies like I love that biohack the body that help to preserve our DNA and preserve our cellular health so that we do not decay as quickly. On the other hand, we have people that are using technologies in jails to capture our eyes in impact of imagery to prove who we are, but in the process of doing so, they might have started immaculate degeneration, and they might have done it on purpose. You see, in jail, we lose all our rights and we have to submit to their process, but nobody explains their process. Nobody articulates what they're doing, why they're doing it, how it will be used in now or in the future, and that's not really fair. We definitely have to defund the police, we definitely have to get rid of the sheriff, and we most certainly have to revise the justice system. But first and foremost, we must close our borders all across America to keep the riffraff out and the technologies that will harm us, abuse us, and kill us at bay.